Hey guys, Elizabeth here from Plant Based Bride and I'm back with another Last Week in Vegan. Is Daya no longer vegan? Canadian company Daya has been purchased by the Japanese pharmaceutical company Otsuka for $325.5 million. Daya's CEO, Terry Tierney, said, Joining the Otsuka family is an honor for all of us at Daya. With aligned values and vision, Daya and Otsuka have a tremendous opportunity to bring the incredible benefits of a plant-forward lifestyle to people around the world. Our partnership with Otsuka enables us to leverage their expertise and vast resources to continue growing our line of great tasting, allergy-friendly food products that have delighted consumers for over 10 years. But this move has sparked outrage and debate in the vegan community because Otsuka tests on animals. Can a vegan company really have aligned values and vision with a company that tests on animals? Popular Toronto pizzeria Apocalypse Now, which is 100% vegan, and my personal favorite place to get pizza in the city, has started a petition begging Daya to back out of the deal. Apocalypse Now uses Daya cheese on all of their pizzas and has built their business around Daya as a pillar in our community that shows you can easily and affordably live a compassionate lifestyle free from harming animals. They currently go through 20 cases of Daya shreds a week and haven't been able to find any substitution any other vegan cheese company that can give them the products they need in the quantity they need at a price that they can afford. Almost 6,000 signatures on this petition show that the Toronto vegan community and the vegan community at large are upset at Daya's choice to betray the ethics and core values that this company was founded on. I'll link the petition in the description bar below if you guys want to read the entire thing and if you're interested in signing it. But there's also backlash against the backlash. I mean, when is there not in the age of the internet? Some claim that selling a vegan company for $300 million is a great sign that the market at large is recognizing how lucrative vegan foods are becoming. Others have a different view. You may be familiar with the podcast Vegan Warrior Princesses Attack. Its hosts, Nicole and Callie, spoke about this issue in their last episode, which was a review of the Beauty and the Beast live action. They said, I see a lot that people use brands that are vegan, that are owned by non-vegan parent companies, and I don't see this as being any different than that. I'm a little confused by the backlash. They continue to go on a bit of a rant about capitalism and what they see as hypocrisy in the vegan movement. I'll leave a link below to the episode if you want to hear that section of the podcast where they speak about this whole thing. And while I don't completely agree with them, it did get me thinking. Here's the way I see it. I buy many vegan products produced by non-vegan brands for many reasons. Availability of vegan items from 100% vegan brands is a factor, but I also do believe that showing my preference for vegan products can make a difference. If a non-vegan company offers vegan and non-vegan products and their revenue from the vegan products continues to increase and their revenue from non-vegan products decreases, perhaps they will start to offer more and more and more vegan products and less and less and less non-vegan products. That's kind of how supply and demand works. And maybe, just maybe, if enough people show their preference for these vegan and cruelty-free products, a company that formerly offered some vegan products but wasn't entirely vegan will go 100% vegan. It's not unheard of. It has happened. But I don't think this move by Daya is comparable to purchasing vegan products from a non-vegan company. While the end result may be that your dollars are going to a company that harms animals, their trajectory is very different. This is why. Daya is currently a 100% vegan company. They're moving in the wrong direction. They are aligning themselves with a company that harms animals, and that means that the dollars I used to spend on Daya that went to continue to produce more vegan products is now going to them and also to a company that hurts animals. So I went from using my money to support something that didn't harm animals at all to using my money to support something that does harm animals a little bit somewhere along the line. And that's not great. I can understand people being upset about that. I'm not too happy about it either. Now, Nicole and Callie bring up the idea that people get so excited when non-vegan companies come out with more vegan products. For example, Ben & Jerry's. When they came out with vegan ice cream, the vegan community got so excited. 
and many, many vegans were purchasing vegan ice cream from a non-vegan company, Ben & Jerry's. But I really disagree that this is a comparable situation. This is a non-vegan company that makes essentially all of their profits from harming animals, coming out with products that don't harm animals. That's a move in the right direction. Even if it's a small amount of their products, they're creating products that don't harm animals and allowing people to show them that those products are in demand. It's a move from a company to create more compassionate products, and I think those kinds of moves need to be supported. If we support them, maybe they'll decide to make more and more and more vegan flavors of ice cream. Maybe at some point it will take over their non-vegan ice cream. This is supporting a company that's showing it's willing to produce products without hurting animals when they didn't before. That's a move towards veganism, as small as it may seem. And Daya is doing the exact opposite. Now I can also see Daya's point of view to a certain extent. They want to increase their distribution worldwide, and Otsuka can help them do that. That may ultimately result in less animals being harmed if dye is available in more places, and more people can choose those dairy-free options over the dairy-filled ones. It may even have a net positive effect that we harm less animals by giving people that option than Otsuka is harming animals by testing on them. But we can't really know that. And even if we had all the data in the world, it's pretty impossible to quantify non-human animals' pain and suffering. I do find it odd that Daya said they share their values and vision with a company that tests on animals. But maybe there's more to the story and these companies than we know. As for me, I'm not going to boycott a pie clips now just because they use Daya cheese and because Daya's made this change. I wholeheartedly hope they find another company to supply their cheese that is 100% vegan, but if they can't, I'm gonna keep supporting this small vegan-owned business that is trying to do the right thing. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. Am I a hypocrite? I'm a vegan that occasionally buys Ben & Jerry's vegan ice cream, but I'm not too happy about what Dai is doing. The next story of the day is an update on the Hampton Creek scandal with Target. In a previous Last Week in Vegan, I spoke about Hampton Creek's products being removed from Target shelves based on unsubstantiated allegations regarding product safety, anonymous accusations of mislabeling, that products included undeclared ingredients, and that they posed salmonella and listeria risks. Prompted by the mysterious circumstances of the removal of their products, Hampton Creek hired investigators to look into it. That investigative team has found several fraudulent unsigned letters that were sent to multiple retailers, not just Target, though Target was the only one to act on what was said in those letters, despite there being no official recall notice from the FDA. At the time of the removal, the LA Times reported that no one had gotten sick and that the FDA wasn't going to conduct an investigation. Hampton Creek's statement at the time read, The allegations that our products are mislabeled and unsafe are false. We have robust food safety standards, and as such, we remain confident about the safety of all products we sell and distribute. We look forward to working with Target and the FDA to bring this to a quick resolution. So what about these fraudulent unsigned letters? Someone close to the investigation said, The return address on the envelope of one letter sent to retailers and turned over to investigators fraudulently purported to be from Hampton Creek CEO Josh Tetrick. The letter itself was unsigned, addressed to retail partner executives and CCs Bloomberg. Andrew Noyes, spokesperson for Hampton Creek, told Veg News that the FDA has since cleared Hampton Creek of all purported safety claims. We've remained confident that our products were safe and properly labeled, and that when presented with the facts, the FDA would agree. They informed us after reviewing applicable evidence that the matter is closed. We've reached out to Target to determine the steps needed to get back on shelves and restore our partnership. We're thankful to the millions of consumers and growing number of partners who continue to support our mission to build a food system where everyone is eating well. But Target doesn't seem so convinced. Their senior public relations manager, Jenna Reck, said, Hampton Creek products remain under review at Target. As a matter of policy, Target doesn't comment on discussions with our vendors and has no update to share at this time. So who do you think was behind these fraudulent letters? Could it be Unilever or Hellman's, the American Egg Board? trying to fight off Hampton Creek yet again? 
Or is someone else feeling threatened by the rapid growth of this plant-based company? Why is Target still reviewing these products even after the FDA has cleared them? Especially since the claims against these products were never substantiated and were from an anonymous source. What do they have to gain from continuing to avoid selling Hampton Creek's products, especially when reports say that the products sold very well? therefore making Target money. Could it be someone else is paying them more than they would make from the Hampton Creek products not to sell them? Or am I letting this story get me all conspiracy theorist? Let me know your thoughts on the debacle below. Goat Cheese Dairy Farm turns into vegan sanctuary. Former dairy farmer Andrea Davis is transitioning her Colorado goat farm into an animal sanctuary and vegan educational center. Davis tried to produce milk as humanely as possible, but soon realized it couldn't be done, finding that she could no longer separate goats from their mothers after seeing the kind of separation anxiety it caused them, similar to what we see in humans. She said, I came to terms with the fact that there was no right way to do a wrong thing. At some point I found vegan education, and though initially and stubbornly resistant to the idea, everything I was reading made undeniable sense. I really love that quote. There is no right way to do the wrong thing. If you want to support Andrea in caring for 250 animals at her sanctuary, I will leave a link below to where you can donate. If you have the vegan 1460 boots in cherry red or purple, please check your batch numbers. If your numbers match what's on the screen, you should return your boots for a full refund or an exchange. Apparently there are traces of a restricted substance over allowable limits in the lining of the tongue of some of the vegan boots from these batches. I love my vegan docs and I'm sure you do too, but please put your safety first and bring them in and get a new pair if yours are from one of these batches. Land Rover exec condemns leather car interiors. The attitude toward animal byproducts is changing. Gerard Gabriel McGovern, design director at Land Rover, said, Personally, I'd be quite happy to move away from leather tomorrow. I don't like that we have to slaughter all those cows to create leather. Me neither, Jerry. Me neither. I'm looking forward to seeing what you're going to do about it, Land Rover, and also seeing a wave of change across the automotive industry. The last thing I wanted to talk about today is Earth Overshoot Day. If you haven't heard of this before, this is the day where we, as a planet of humans, have used the amount of resources that our Earth could regenerate in a year. The problem is we get to that point faster than a year. This year, Earth Overshoot Day was August 2nd. So that means from January 1st, 2017 to August 2nd, 2017, all the humans on Earth have used the amount of resources our Earth could replenish in one full calendar year. It means we're using 170% of the resources our Earth can regenerate. Humans are putting increasing demands on the Earth and it can't handle it. And that puts us in a really scary position. According to the Global Footprint Network, food makes up 26% of our global footprint. We can reduce that footprint by cutting our food waste, eating locally sourced foods, eating less meat, and eating more fruits and vegetables. If you want to calculate your own ecological footprint and find your personal overshoot day, I will leave a link below to a calculator that can do just that. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's Last Week in Vegan. If you did, give this video a thumbs up and please leave your thoughts in the comments below. I'll see you guys really soon in my next video. Bye. Yes, I have a bandage on my finger. I cut my finger while cutting potatoes last night. Don't do that, it really hurts. Nice safety is important.